welcome to episode 16 of the news that broke glass. It is Boardwalk Buds fucking weekend, PFX7 is tonight, I have the weekend off work, fuck yes, and I'm also going for a pub crawl fucking tomorrow, and if you might be able to hear in the background, there'll be some saws or drills or banging or something, because my downstairs neighbours for the 19th time since January are doing work on the flat downstairs. Which just consists of sawing and banging and noise and just mess and trash everywhere for like hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and on end. So that's fucking great. Anyway, who gives a fuck about that? It's Boardwalk Buds. And um, say first on a sad note, RIP to Super Genie, Melissa Coates, Sabu's uh, partner and um, valet. RIP, she, uh, she was in a accident or something, I think she had to get one of her legs amputated or something, like quite recently, and now she has sadly passed away, so RIP to her, and hopefully Sabu's doing okay through all this. And other sad news, uh, today, uh, this is PFX7 at 8pm um, tonight at the showboat, um, and our champion is in fucking stuck in West Virginia as of time of recording this. And this is at uh, 1 p.m. in the uh, 1 p.m. UK time. So John Wayne Murdoch was driving um, to Atlantic City, and his fucking car hit a deer, and he's fucking stuck in West Virginia. So somebody needs to go and pick him up, or fucking fly him somewhere, or send him money, or do something. Hopefully, by the time this video comes out, he'll probably already be on his way, and everything will be fine. But hopefully, everything works out because that'll be really, really bad if he misses that first night. Um. Now, I'm going to go through my sort of top matches for each show, each day of uh, Boardwalk Buds for ICW No Holds Barred, if I can find all the cards, because there's a lot of fucking matches. So tonight, I would say my favourite matches I'm most looking forward to, there's so many matches, there's like not a bad match on this thing. Fuck me. Genuinely, this like looks like one of the, probably the strongest card of the whole thing. Uh, top three, Tank versus John Wayne Murdoch, hopefully John Wayne Murdoch can make it. Um, big shout out to the Rev Dan Wilson, by the way, who gave my video a shout out on his Facebook page, and I was uh, chatting to him on his Facebook page and listened to his. Uh, he does like a horror podcast thing. So thanks to Dan Wilson for supporting the channel and love him and love Tank and love everything they do. And I hopefully get a fucking signed eight by ten of uh, Tank and the Rev like I put up on my wall. Um, so yeah, so that probably be uh, Satu Jin against Jeff Cannonball. Genuinely, I, in fact, I can't even pick matches for the first night because everything's fucking great. The only one I would say I'm least looking forward to is probably Phil Baroni against Justin Kyle. But that's no fault of Phil Baroni's. I've just never seen him before. Love Justin Kyle, so that'll be good. I mean, Alex Ocean, Nolan Edward, fucking Dan Mapp against Schlack. Akira against Reed Bentley. Sadika against Kimberly. There's so much shit on this show. Um, and then we'll move on to the pit, which I was expecting to have just like two or three matches, but it's got seven matches on it. Uh, six matches, sorry. Uh, Satu Jin against Jomi Murdoch, obviously. Uh, Herzog against Neil Diamond Cutter, that is completely going to be my favourites. And I'd probably say third. I mean, Akira against Tony Deppin is going to be fucking great too. But Kevin Giza um, against Reed Bentley, and this is at the fucking sandlot. This is tomorrow afternoon, so this will be on for me about nine o'clock at night when I just get in from a pub crawl. So that'll be an interesting turn of events to see how fucking drunk I am to watch the pit. I might, I might need to have a small nap before NHB 13 happens. Speaking of NHB 13, uh, this is probably like the, the sort of super card show for the uh, weekend. Dale Patrick's and Diamond Cutter. Uh, Johnny Murdoch against Sadika for the title. And I would say Tank versus Casanova Valentine. So I'm a big fucking Tank mark. And probably a match that I'm going to say is probably going to be one of the better matches and probably one of my favourite matches. Uh, it's going to be the tag team match. Ocean and Demanto against the Kirks. I still think Ocean and Kirk should be a tag team and should just turn on the boss, but who knows what's going to happen. And finally, PFX 8. Um, I'll say that there is um, one of the women who works with ICW who does the grinders and the sort of uh, rolling trays and everything. She does all, th uh, does all things like creative stuff with resin and stuff she makes. Um, I think it's the same person that's now making bath like soap big bars of soap that have like the covers of the fucking like icw posters on them and there's like a larry legend one and everything i'll put up a picture because they look fucking awesome i'm gonna buy some uh, once they're available online so for nh uh, pit fighter 8 uh my god satu jin against dan math akira against john Murdoch, 
Kevin Giesers back. Neil Diamond Cutter against Reed Bentley. My God, there's just so much talent over these shows. But I'd say 100% looking forward to the most. Tank Johnny Murdoch, Dan Mav Schlack, Alex Ocean, Nolan Edward for the first show. Then Geezer Reed Bentley, John Wayne Murdoch, Satu Jin, and Herzog near Diamond Car for the pit. For NHB 13, John Wayne Murdoch against Sadika, Tank Casanova, and the tag match for the Kirks. And NHB, I keep wanting to call it NHB, but it's the pit. Um, the pit fighter 8, John Wayne Murdoch, Akira, Satu Jin, Dan Mav, and Neil Diamond Cutter against Reed Bentley, but there's just so many other matches like Nolan against fucking Grim Reefer, Big Beef against Tony Deppin. So much, so much action and talent. It's going to be a fucking awesome weekend. Can't fucking wait. And next week's episode, I'm going to do a full fucking review of all four shows of Boardwalk Buds. It's going to be an interesting episode. Um, also, there's a new match announced um, for the July 4th show at 7 pm in the fucking bloodshed. NHB 14, an insane lane, makes his ICW Nodes Bar debut, uh, who is having a career resurgence, much like Tank, those two just fought each other in Pro Wrestling Georgia in a no-row barbed wire match, and I do not think I'll ever get the chance to see that, because I don't think that was recorded, but it looked cool for the uh, little uh, clips I saw, and uh, the photos, so Neil Diamond Cutter against Insane Lane, that's going to be fucking awesome, can't fucking wait for that. Now. We'll quickly move on to some GCW news. Um, the Mud Show, I did watch the Mud Show, but see, for me, usually when I watch things, I pay money for them, I want to watch them live, and the Mud Show was impossible to watch live to start with. Like, it was just jittery and shit, and I understand they're in Wyoming, I understand it's a Mud Show, I understand they're in a barn, and I get it. I understand why the, the feet was shit, but for me, it made it unwatchable, so I didn't watch it, and then the only thing, uh, Brett Lauderdale said they, they've cleaned the feet up now, the only thing I went back and rewatched was the main event, which was good. Mansur, Gage, the fire, Br uh, brawn at the concession stands, and apparently fucking cops arrived after the show, and they uh, were questioning Mans Warner and Nick Gage. So, you know, the main event was good. Cops turning up, uh, interesting, but the feed was shit, so I didn't really get to watch much of the show. But anyway, who cares? Um, we now have a full card for the July 18th Zona 23 show. At the junkyard in Mexico. Um, right, so let's just go through these. I'll just put the ones that the GCW guys are in. Things that people will be most interested in. So, Eric Ryan is teaming with Demet Extreme versus Corazaro Jr. and Draco in a tag team match. Um, Jimmy Lloyd is in a three way dance with L Lunatic, Lunatic Extreme and Terremoto. So, that should be interesting. So, they are two. Eric Ryan uh, and Jimmy Lloyd are fucking awesome. And then the main th the main three matches of the night is Siglope against Alex Cologne, Aero Boy against G Raver, and Medio Extremo against Schlack. So they are three matches that can main event any company anywhere. So that's gonna be fucking insane. And um, that's on July 18th. Fucking awesome. And um, we've also got new matches for You Only Die Once, um, which is July 10th, 8 p.m. in Dallas, Texas. We have gonna be probably one of the matches of the year. GCW World Title, Nick Gage, the God, the King, the fucking MDK all fucking day is going to be defending his world title against Alex Cologne. Hopefully it's for both belts. We've still not seen the new belt that supposedly GCW have for it. And Joey Janela is finally going to be fighting Ninja Mac because they were going to have that match at Zombie Walk, but Janela got injured. Um, so that's a small bit of GCW stuff for uh, this week. Now moving on to Heavy Metal Wrestling Power Blood. Is finally on IWTV. All three shows are on IWTV. The only one I've managed to watch so far with work and all this bullshit um, has been Power Blood. And I will say, I won't go through a whole review of it, but watch that fucking show. It's awesome. It's fucking really, really good. In the space of like one weekend, you had Effie's Fear the Gay Agenda, you had Power Blood and all the heavy metal shows, and you had Masters of Pain. What a fucking weekend for Deathmatch Wrestling. And it, this show, Power Blood, had one of the best matches I've seen all year. Give it five fucking stars. Fucking Ruben Steele, who would have thought, against Neil Diamond Cutter. What are you wanting? Okay. But that match is fucking awesome. Go your way to fucking watch it. I'm going to do a music video thing for it uh, later on today. But it was fucking great. 
So now we will move on to another show that is happening tomorrow this weekend, um, which is H2O's Death Anniversary. So just have a little quick rundown of the card we're looking for. Um, Payne against RSP for the H2O title. This is for H2O are challenging for all the belts. Cannonball against Kogar for the Danny Havoc Hardcore title. Mouse against Gregory Irons. Ross and Bradley against Ryan and the Bev. I hope H2O win all the belts because that would just storyline wise be better. And Alex Cologne was meant to be fighting Jimmy Lyon um, in our staple gun match, but Alex Cologne is apparently now injured from something to do with Masters of Pain, so he is going to be he wants to be healthy when he fights Jimmy Lyon. So that is now going to be we don't know who's fighting Jimmy Lyon now, but Kennedy Copeland also has an open challenge. Just combine the two matches, everybody's happy. Uh, we've got the Rising Star Scramble with, you know, all the usual young guys in it. That'll be fucking good. And Bam Sullivan against Declan Grant. Hopefully Bam Sullivan fucking wins. I love Bam Sullivan. One of my new favourite sort of guys. Time being, that'll be fucking good. Unfortunately, though, uh, though for H2, they are running against NHB 13. Um, so, I'll be watching NHB 13 and I'll watch this afterwards. And I'll also do a review of this show next week. So, next week's episode's probably going to be quite long. Lucky you. Now, we want to No Peace Underground, and they've announced another new show called Annihilation, which is, you know, the name of that really, really good movie that I assume most people have seen, um, which is in Texas, and it is the same date as the ICW Nolds Bard in Texas, so No Peace Underground, just following ICW Nolds Bard on the road, it seems. Um, that'll be good. Their next show at the Sound Bar, which is July 4th at 4 p.m., is going to be This Hell is Home, which is going to be good. Sawyer Wreck against Mickey Knuckles, that'll be awesome. Sawyer Wreck's looking really, really good these days. Um, Pondo is going to be against Remington Roar, or Thor, or Roar, whatever, however my handwriting's pronounced. I've not really seen too much of him. Uh, Jamie Senegal is against Kennedy Copeland, because hopefully Kennedy Copeland wins, she's fucking great. Jamie Senegal's good too, but I like Kennedy Copeland better. Bam Sullivan's against Hardway Heater, who a guy I've never seen before. Uh, Lord Crew from The Hallowed is against Matthew Justice, that'll be a good match. And the Young Dragons, Dale Patricks and Josh Crane are against um, The End, which is Odinson and Paro. So, one, two, three, four, five, we've got six, pretty much got a full card for that show. So that'll be fucking great, good, no peace underground's always entertaining. So then anybody notice my new Satu Jin t-shirt that I've got. Courtesy of, um, I did pay for it by the way, when I say courtesy, I don't mean they sent me it for free. I pay for my wrestling merchandise. Um, sent from Deathmatch Worldwide and very, very kind words from the owner of that company. Corey Higdon. Uh, very, very nice words messaged me today. Um, supporting the channel, I support them, they're fucking great. He does all this, all the t-shirt stuff, the Deathmatch Worldwide stuff, all on his own. There's not a big fucking massive team of people, all on his own. So go and fucking buy some Deathmatch Worldwide shirts and support him and support fucking Deathmatch Wrestling. Thank you. You get fucking t-shirts with Satu Jin. What more could one want? Um, right, we'll move on now to IWA Mid-South uh, now because they lost the building for Trainwreck and Prince and King of the Death Matches. Um, because the fire, mar uh, fire Marshal took the keys away in that place in Actual Royal Memorial Hall. Um, they are now managed to get a new building, or outside, or whatever, which is Southside Turners in German Park in Indianapolis, Indiana. Still going to be Friday the 30th July and Saturday uh, July 31st. Um, but apparently Ian Rotten, who says a lot of things a lot of the time um, over the years, has uh, said that this King of the Death matches is the last King of the Death matches because he can't be bothered doing any more Death match stuff. There's too many problems, blah, blah, blah. But Ian Rotten said various different things over the years. This is the final IWA show. This is him finally retiring. This is the final this. This is the final that. It never ever ends up being the case. So hopefully it's not the final King of the Death matches. But if it is, um, it'll be a good way to go out. Moving quickly to not so much a news update, but um, I and my friend who has never been to a death match show or watched a death match in his entire life. He has been a wrestling fan about as long as me. What, how long have we been? 25 years, something like that? 
but he's predominantly watched WWE, TNA, WCW, things like that. Um, so this will be his first foray into death matches, but I have managed to get me and him two tickets to Games of Death 2 by Rise, which is going to be, uh, they release new tickets at Eager Studios, where I'm going to go and see the Outlaw Cup with my girlfriend in September, but this is going to be November 6th, two months afterwards. Um, so we're going to see Games of Death 2. So we're going to see two UK deathmatch tournaments two months after each other. So that'll be fucking good. So thank you to Rise um, for putting more tickets on sale. Fucking all the bullshit they've had in the fucking UK with fucking... Oh, lockdown this. Oh no, this. This is Freedom Day. This isn't Freedom Day. This is this. Oh, you can't run shows. Oh, blah, blah, blah. We can have 8,000 million people are watching football in a pub, but you can't fucking possibly run a wrestling event. Fucking bullshit. Anyway. We'll move on to Japan, and uh, for Big Japan Pro Wrestling, um, just for the last couple of days, uh, Drew Parker beat Takeda to advance. Oh no wait, sorry, not Takeda. Drew Parker beat Violento Jack to advance, and Ito beat Ka uh, Kamatani. So, the final Deathmatch Survivor Finals, which is on Monday, this coming Monday the 28th, um, is Drew Parker versus Ito for the Deathmatch Survivor Finals. So hopefully, Somebody will be able to get me some clips or a video of that entire match because that'll be fucking awesome. Really want to see that. Hopefully, fucking Drew Parker wins. Fucking come on. And we have got some awesome matches announced for the Freedom's Deathmatch Carnival show on the fifth of July. And um, there's so much fucking wrestling happening in like the next like, couple of days. You've got Boardwalk Buds. You got Deathmatch Survivor, Deathmatch Carnival, the F uh, FMWE show, fucking H2O. There's the bloodshed shows, like, no peace. There's so much wrestling over the next few weeks. Fucking awesome. How my fucking little brain gonna cope? Anyway, Violento Jack is gonna face Sakura for the Freedom's title. Takeda is gonna be fighting Rina Yamashita in one on one match, death match. And Yuki and Saduka, sorry, Yuki and Sakura um, are gonna be fighting Kasai and Sasaki for the Freedom's tag team titles. There's other matches announced, but I'll just go over the deathmatch stuff. That's going to be a fucking awesome show. It's Freedoms. You know what you're going to get. I want to see Violento Jack and ERE win all those fucking matches. Because I love them. And somebody still needs to get me a fucking t-shirt of ERE. And finally, we move on to... Oh, before I do that. Sorry, Nelly. On the uh, ICW Merch Club thing, I managed to get these new posters. Big Japan. Freedoms one. And uh, this one is a Jun Kasai Takeda talking battle, which I assume is like them sort of standing in a room doing promos against each other or something. Who knows? Cool shit. But ICW's Merch Club will be back on Tuesday. Get your fucking wallets ready um, for Tuesday 29th, and they will be doing fight use weapons, signed posters, signed 8x10s. And me, I want some motherfucking signed posters and 8x10s from Boardwalk Butts. I want that my collection is growing and when I finally move into my new fucking house and I can move all this posters and have an entire wall covered in framed posters and have a cool sad marquee backdrop for doing more of these videos. Anyway, I digress. Finally onto FMWE, Onita was standing on a beach in his signature leather jacket that he may have to blow up if he loses that match um, on July 4th and he was standing with his jacket and his barbed wire baseball bat and he called out Matt Tremont again. Because Matt Tremont's not answered Onita and Onita basically said that he is going to come to the fucking USA and fight Matt Tremont one on one in an exploding barbed wire death match. Pretty much what he said. So that would be fucking awesome. I assume they're not going to do it in the h Troll Centre. I mean it'd be cool if they did. But I think they need a probably a slightly bigger building if they're going to have Onita come back to America. So interesting fucking times. Matt Tremont's clearly going to come at retirement to fight Onita. Why wouldn't you? He's fucking Onita. Anyway, that is the news that broke glass this week. Um, it is Boardwalk Buds tonight. It is PFX7 tonight. Fingers crossed John Wayne Murdoch fucking makes it. And thank you for all the support. Thanks to The Rev. Uh, thanks to Deathmatch Worldwide. And thank you all for watching. And as we say on this channel, on this show, no Deathmatch, no life.